Have you ever wondered if people actually click on those ridiculous links associated with corn? I don't really want to get demonetized, so you know which ones I mean, right? The ones telling you there's beautiful middle-aged women in your area who would like some rather riveting company, or even the ones saying that they can extend the length of a certain sausage. It's super easy to dismiss these as stupid or just desperation, but the truth is actually far more complex. There's actually real science-backed reasons as to why certain individuals are drawn to this clickbait, and it goes beyond just being lonely and or naive. In fact, it all comes down to the crucial factors we always talk about, psychology and biology. We can see neurotransmitter changes and even certain genes playing a huge role. Some people may actually be genetically wired to fall for these links, not because they're clueless, but because their brains are programmed differently. So before you scoff at those who click, let's actually see what's going on inside their heads and making them want to meet those women only 0.2 miles away. So, as said, these scams tend to exploit powerful mechanisms that can trick pretty much anyone predisposed. At the heart of this behaviour lies the aforementioned dopamine, the brain's feel-good neurotransmitter. Pretty much any study you read will mention that dopamine surges upon encountering something novel, unexpected, or tied to potential reward. Sexual content ticks off all of these boxes. Now, evolutionary psychologists propose that this stems from our primal wiring to seeking new mates and maximising reproductive success, which is a phenomenon known as the Coolidge effect. Basically, your ancestors bonked as many times as they could in order to get the best offspring. And if you look at the demographic transition model, poor countries also kind of do this to this day. Going back, studies in animals have shown that males in particular exhibit heightened sexual interest when presented with novel partners, even after mating with previous ones. The same drive fuels human curiosity towards new sexual content, especially when it promises excitement or exclusivity. But it's not just biology shaping our influence. In psychology, there's a neat concept called biases from heuristics, which are basically just mental shortcuts that affect our decision making. The main one in this scenario is the novelty bias, in which the idea of the local lady feels new and unique, even though unlikely, and the commitment fallacy further adds to this. Someone simply sees that advertisement of Carolina block away, and they become mentally invested into seeing what happens next. If you add this to the hyperactive reward prediction mechanism, where the brain anticipates a dopamine hit before even clicking it, impulsivity again takes over. And beyond your genetics, certain neurological traits increase susceptibility too. Your prefrontal cortex, for instance, responsible for decision-making and impulse control, needs to constantly suppress urges triggered by your limbic system, which is what drives immediate gratification. If you're stressed or even ill, the ability to resist weakens, making the temptation even more powerful. It's actually why scammers tend to target people during the evening or even during disasters to override rationality of the victims. And finally, your personality actually plays a massive role. People found to score high in sensation-seeking or conscientiousness tend to engage more freely in impulsive behaviours, like wanting to meet the lady in the advert down the road. Sexual compulsivity also highly correlated, especially if the participant is desensitised to dopamine from corn. In a brief summary, these people falling for these scams are not foolish. They're just victims of deeply rooted psychological and biological drives from millennia ago. But we can actually unpack this even further, because there's so much more that can predict chasing this empty reward. So, we've established that cognitive biases and dopamine-driven novelty-seeking play a huge role in why people click on these sketchy links for apparently nearby women. But could some individuals genuinely just be genetically predisposed to fall for these links, giving them a somewhat disadvantage in, well, life? In the general theme of this channel, of course they can. Certain genes and neurobiological factors influence primarily impulsivity, risk-taking and even sexual curiosity. In general, some people are far more likely to take the bait. Let's start with one of the most infamous genes in behavioural science, the MAOA gene, also known as the warrior gene. This gene regulates monoamine oxidase A, which is an enzyme that actually breaks down neurotransmitters like dopamine and serotonin. 
Now, some variants of this gene are linked to lower impulse control and increased risk taking. It's why most of the studies on the genes variants found that having it leads to sometimes psychopathy due to the heightened impulsivity. Obviously not everyone with the variant is a psychopath, but there is a scary link. Another major player is the DRD474 gene, or the novelty seeking gene. This gene affects dopamine receptors in the brain and is linked to an increased tendency for thrill seeking behaviour, whether that being extreme sports, gambling or clicking on these suspicious yet enticing links of these local women in your area. Research suggests that carriers of this variant are naturally inclined to seek out potential risky experiences like the above. Meanwhile, the COMT gene is another gene that regulates dopamine levels, influencing patients and, again, impulsivity. Individuals with a low activity variant of the COMP gene tend to experience higher dopamine levels in the prefrontal cortex, making them more prone to impulsivity and risky behaviours, especially with immediate rewards. Now, I couldn't find any studies confirming if there is a direct link to online interactions in the comp gene, especially with the nature of this video, but it is worth knowing the general link regardless of the online interaction principle. And we can't even move beyond genetics to general hormone levels. Testosterone, for example, has been linked to higher risk tolerance and impulsivity. Increased levels have been shown to correlate with a greater willingness to engage in risky behaviours, and it might explain why men are more frequently targeted by these types of scams, until obviously clarity sets in. On the contrary, we've got oxytocin, commonly called the bonding hormone, which can increase trust and gullibility. Researchers found that in this case, high levels of oxytocin can make people more susceptible to deception, as they become more likely to believe misleading or emotionally charged messages. It's why scammers use emotionally charged scenarios, even things about the homeless and war. And at its core, this all loops back to dopamine. Some people have a higher sensitivity to dopaminergic surges, making them more prone to quick rewards, even at a cost. The combination of genetics, hormonal influences, and neurological wiring factoring in neurotransmitters creates such a strong urge to see what these links actually are. And guess what? There's even more beyond your body. So far, we've explored the genetic and neurological factors that make someone likely to click on a sketchy link. But biology alone doesn't tell the entire thing. As we said earlier, psychological traits and environmental factors also play a huge role in determining who wants to travel those 0.2 miles, and obviously who doesn't. If we focus on just your personality first, there are certain traits that make people more susceptible to impulsive behaviours, whether that be online or not. You can actually do one of these quizzes online, I'll leave a link down below. Studies have shown that individuals high in sensation seeking, those who crave novel experiences, are more likely to engage in behaviours like clicking this. Low conscientiousness, again, is a massive factor, and to expand from previously, this is a trait associated with the disorganisation and a lack of impulse control. But in general, impulse control is generally lowered anyway at ridiculous hours in the morning with, you know, corn. It's almost like a correlation issue. But then we kind of get to the basics, which I assume you would presume anyway. Emotional states. Yes, you're kind of right, stress, loneliness, and even boredom can weaken impulse control, it's just not the full picture. But these things can make people want to seek dopamine boosts. A lot of people who end up taking drugs actually cite friends at the time getting them into it, following meeting them due to loneliness anyway. And contrarily, research shows that if you're mentally drained at work or something, you're more likely to make impulsive choices like wanting to see if this woman is real. So lastly, let's look at the environment. Now, kind of similar to the above, if you're isolated, your susceptibility increases. Lonely individuals often cite connection or even validation following falling for scams, which is why ads tend to focus on the woman being near you. And the internet as a whole pretty much reinforces this with the constant feedback loops of engagement it gives you. It gives you what seems like reward with instant feedback for something as simple as clicking, which is actually what's used in gambling, a notion called intermittent reinforcement. If the rewards are unpredictable, it makes you want to click even more. Even if someone doesn't have all the genes and neurological factors, the simple nature of this ad being so mysterious can still intrigue someone enough to click, especially with these other above factors. It's probably just less likely. So that's pretty much the general predispositions into why so many people click on these dodgy links wanting to meet the women down the street. But even with all these mechanisms to consider, it could be all of them, or even none. It's just obviously a lot more likely that there's so much play. For your neurobiology and your environment can indeed make you more likely to click. 
It's not just those typical people you're imagining. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. And if you don't, well, those women will be moving significantly further away. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. It's free and it really helps me out. See you next time.